Hey guys, in an Algebra 2 course, you're typically taught how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I've reminded you what that formula is by writing it at the top of the screen. Now, just to be very clear, when you look at this formula, this represents the two outcomes or the two solutions when you solve a quadratic equation. And the two solutions arrive with the plus or minus. What I want to tell you in this video is how to construct the quadratic if you're given the answers. So in Algebra 2, you were taught, here's a question, please find the answer. And in this lesson, you'll be taught, here's the answer, what was the original question? So here are the roots. Go backwards and construct the quadratic equation from where those roots came. What I'm going to do for you in this video is derive the sum and product of roots formulas. And to start, I'm going to take the two roots from the quadratic formula and I'm going to find the sum. Now, we know that the sum means to add. So I'm going to take these two roots here in the red box and I'm going to write them separately and then I'm going to add them together. So you'll notice that when I've set these up, the two fractions look almost identical with one very important difference. And that is in the first one, we have the plus portion of the answer. And in the second fraction, we have the minus portion of the answer. And that's reflected right here in the quadratic, uh, the quadratic formula. Now we're going to add these two roots together. And we know that to add two fractions, we first have to have a common denominator. Now luckily, we have that. We have a common denominator. And that denominator is 2a. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. Now that the denominator is done, I'm going to focus on the numerator and add all the things in the numerator. Now the two numerators look really kind of complex and intimidating. However, a lot of very nice things are going to happen. This square root chunk, the one on the left is preceded by a positive, And the one on the right is preceded by a negative. So we essentially have the same chunk, but one is positive and one is negative. And when we add those together, they're going to just drop out. They're going to cancel out altogether. So really, the only things that we're left with on the top are the negative b in the beginning and the negative b in the beginning of the second fraction. And negative b plus a negative b is negative 2b. So now we have negative 2b over 2a. The 2's cancel. And you're really just left with negative b over a. OK, so this is the formula for sum of two roots, negative b over a. And let's write that down here in the little summary. The sum of two roots is given by the formula negative b over a. OK, now the second derivation is for the product of two roots. And product means multiply. So I'm going to set up a multiplication problem using these two roots. Okay, so I've set up the two fractions and it looks really scary again because the, the numerators are just insane. And this time I'm not going to add but I'm going to multiply because the keyword is product. Now, what I like to do in problems like this is start with what I find to be the easier things first because it really uh, helps my self-confidence. So when you're multiplying fractions, you need to multiply across on the top and across on the bottom. And the bottom just looks a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first because it's going to really make me feel better about the whole situation. Now 2a times 2a is 4a squared. So that was no big deal. Now multiplying across on the top, this is going to be a little bit more challenging. But I'm going to give you a little hint that perhaps will help. And that hint, I'm going to write something off to the side. If you were multiplying two things together that were um, binomials, but that were conjugates, I'm going to throw this word conjugate in here. Let's say x minus 3 times x plus 3. A conjugate is when you have a binomial written twice, except the sign of the middle term has changed. So we have an x and a 3, an x and a 3, but one is a minus and one is a plus. This is what I call a conjugate situation. Now, traditionally, if you're multiplying two binomials together, you're going to FOIL. However, it's always the case that when you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, the outer and the inner terms cancel out. 
So if the O and the I of FOIL cancel out, you're just left with F and L, which I like to abbreviate as Florida. So in this case, I'm just going to do a Florida situation. So the product of the first terms, x times x, x squared, and then the product of the last terms is minus 9. So essentially what I did here is I multiplied a binomial by its conjugate using the Florida technique. Now, how does that apply to this, these two numerators over here is that it's the same thing. We've got two terms over here. We've got two terms over here, and they're identical except the middle terms are opposite each other. This one's plus and this one's minus. So while it's a much more complicated situation of what I wrote in green, it's the same idea. That means I'm going to do a Florida starting with the first. Negative b times negative b is positive b squared. Now I'm going to do positive chunk times negative chunk. Well, a positive times a negative is a negative, and root chunk times root chunk is going to be just chunk, which is b squared minus 4ac. However, it's absolutely essential that I maintain the chunk of that chunk. And to do that, I need to use parentheses. Otherwise, the chunk gets lost and it's no longer a chunk anymore. But using this grouping symbol, the parentheses, it stays a chunk. Now I'm going to clean up the top just a little bit by distributing the negative through. OK, and I notice on the top that I've got a b squared and a minus b squared, so they're going to cancel out. And what I'm left with is 4ac over 4a squared. And the 4s cancel out. And one set of a's cancels out, leaving me with c over a. So the formula for product of roots is c over a. And I'm going to write this in the summary box down at the bottom of the page. Now, the formulas together include the variables a, b, and c. And those are precisely the variables that you're going to use here in the original quadratic equation, a x squared plus bx plus c. And in a subsequent video, I will show you how to work with these formulas using specific problems.